Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I was inspired to share with you a few fragrances that I loved the smell of but could not hold on to them because the performance was so poor. And I wanted to contrast it with a few fragrances that I also loved but couldn't hold on to because they were a little too strong or headache inducing. So perfumes that I really enjoyed the way they smelled but there was no chance that I was ever going to be able to wear them without basically giving myself a headache every single day. So if you guys are interested in hearing what these are, then stay tuned. If this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia, and on this channel we talk mostly about perfumes. We also sometimes do a little bit of minimalism, home decor, and decluttering, and if you like those kind of things, definitely stick around and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get started. Number one, Valentino Donna. So this perfume I used to have a long time ago when it first came out and I'm pretty sure they must have reformulated it or tweaked how they made it because back in the day I can remember the original Valentino Donna being very long lasting. It was so beautiful, such a gorgeous, sophisticated, lipsticky scent and it was one of my favorite scents. However, when I revisited it last year and purchased a new bottle, I thought that I must have gotten a bad bottle because it just didn't last. I actually purchased it again from a different, more reputable department store and it was the same thing. It just had terrible, terrible performance and it was one that I felt like I should have gotten more bang for my buck. I felt like I needed to spray a lot of it and I just felt like it was really weak, especially for what it was. Valentino, you expect it to have good performance. All of the men's fragrances are so bold. And most of their women's ones are pretty bold as well. And I don't know what they've done to Donna, but poor Donna, she is just not so strong anymore. She has become weak. And I really wish they'd fix it because I love that perfume. The second one is Hugo Boss, the scent Private Accord for her. Now this one, you guys, blew up all over the place. I think because of Jeremy Fragrance. He was the first person I heard really talk about it and he said it was such a sexy perfume, like the sexiest of sexy perfumes for women. I think he made every woman on the planet want that perfume, including myself. And it was one of the very first perfumes I bought last year and I was so excited to get it. And unfortunately, this one, I felt like I had to spray it over and over I had to spray so much on myself I could literally douse myself in it and it would still be gone in about half an hour and I know I'm not the only person who's had that experience with this perfume but I know a lot of people have let it go for the exact same reasons it just has terrible performance I don't understand because the men's version is so bold and so delicious and so rich why is it that the women's version is so weak Number three, Dolce & Gabbana Pour Femme, the original one, as well as the Intense. Both of these perfumes I have owned, both of them I have blind purchased. I actually had one gifted to me from a company about a year ago, and both of them I let go because I literally felt like they were watered down. They are so beautiful. They're such a delicious, sexy, marshmallowy scent, perfect for going out, perfect for date nights, really luxe, really delicious smelling, but just had terrible performance and yeah I couldn't keep either of them I actually felt like maybe I had gotten a bad bottle that somebody had watered it down both of them were quite light and it's really too bad because had they had better performance I definitely would have kept both of them I thought they were so beautiful and so sexy and my fourth and last fragrance that I can remember letting go of solely because of the performance, even though I loved it so much, was Maison Margiela Whispers in the Library. So you guys probably remember me talking this one up so much. I loved this scent. This was a gorgeous woody vanilla. It really reminded me of being in an antique cottage or an antique house, but the walls were infused with vanilla and it smelled a little bit like books and it was just so relaxing and so gorgeous and just one of the most beautiful fragrances I've ever smelt. But again, this one was gone with the wind. I felt like I could use it for room spray, put it on my bedding, anything except wear it for perfume because it just wouldn't last. And even if I was to use it for room spray, it still wouldn't last. So essentially I had no use for it and I did end up letting it go. And so it really is a shame if they would have put the perfume oils just a few notches higher, I think that that would be on a lot more people's um, top favorite perfume list, mine included, but yeah, I had to let it go because there's no point in wearing a perfume that you cannot smell. 
So now let's move on to the perfumes that I loved the way they smelled, but there was no chance I was ever going to be able to wear them because they were too strong. Number one is Shagoff Oud. So Shagoff Oud had its moment in the spotlight, and I don't really hear that many people talk about it anymore. I feel like the perfume community really boomed in 2019-2020, and Shagoff Oud was on the top of everyone's list because it was such a good dupe for Lancome's Oud Bouquet, which it was. I had a sample of Lancome's Oud Bouquet, and I kind of found the same thing with Oud Bouquet. Okay, although Oud Bouquet was a little bit more tolerable I found because it was smoother and better blended I think and just higher quality. Both of them, to be fair, I couldn't really do. Both of them were just far too strong, gave me almost an instant headache. The performance wasn't a problem, obviously, which is great. Only one spray and you would be able to smell it all day, which is awesome, but it was just one of those perfumes that was so bold and in my face that I couldn't do it. It just choked me out. So while I could appreciate the perfume for what it was, both Chaga Food and Oud Bouquet, those were ones that just were absolutely not going to work for me. The second fragrance I got rid of because it was too strong was Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal or Scandal and all of them, pretty much all of them except for the uh, Paris. I have not smelt the Paris one which I've heard is a lot lighter and better for daytime and a little bit fruitier. That one I would still like to smell, I just haven't blind purchased it yet because I've had such terrible luck with the other um, Scandal fragrances. The original Scandal, yes I liked the way it smelled, I thought that it was very sweet and attractive and sexy and all of that stuff, but it was so strong and so suffocating and so headache inducing, at least for me. I could not do it. I tried it. I could not do it. I tried the So Scandal. I tried Scandal by Night. None of them worked for me. All of them were just far too sweet and far too strong. I wonder if the A Peri or A Peri one will be right for me. Another fragrance that I went completely nuts over but did have to let go of was Nishane Annie. So if you guys watch my channel, you know that that one I fell in love with and I still think it is one of the most beautiful, unique vanilla fragrances I've ever smelt. It was kind of like a vanilla ice cream cone with warm and fresh spicy all combined in one and it was truly so so delicious like mouth-watering good but that one I did have to let go of because every time I smelt it or sprayed it on myself I just found it so overwhelming and so powerful and I think this is kind of where some niche fragrances have a fault is sometimes they're so strong and so high quality and such high perfume oil concentration that you can't tolerate them and that's what I found with this one and finally, the last fragrance that I got rid of because it was just too strong and overpowering was Twilly d'Hermes Eau Poivre. So I really like the Twilly fragrances, both of the original one and the Eau Poivre. I think they're so beautiful, they're so classy, so elegant, so bold, so confident. They just smell like money, they smell expensive. But the Eau Poivre, even though I found it so gorgeous, there was something about it that just gave me an instant headache. It was incredibly intense, very, very strong just really filled the air around me and no matter how hard I tried, how many times I tried to wear it, whether it was clothing only, skin only, one spray, it didn't seem to matter. It gave me an instant headache and it's too bad it breaks my heart because it was honestly one of the classiest perfumes I've ever smelt and I do highly recommend that one if you can handle the amount of pink pepper that's in there and just how strong it is overall. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance and yeah, that one kind of broke my heart but that was one I just couldn't get on board with and I did have to say goodbye to it. So that is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing about these fragrances. Please let me know down below if you have a fragrance that you loved but had to let go of because it just didn't last long enough or if there was a perfume that you loved but couldn't wear because it was way too strong. And if you guys haven't already, feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram and I will see you guys all very soon. Bye for now.